in the enterprise. All right, well, moving on then. JSW Steel, well, it's more or less flattish with a bit of a negative bias. Remember, the numbers were, they showed a bit of an improvement on a sequential basis, though valuation-wise, it's the most expensive steel stock. Though, in fact, you know, earlier, I spoke uh, to Mr. Shashagri Rao, the joint MD and group CFO of the company, and I began by asking him that things are improving. How does he see things panning out? Let's hear him out. The actual uh, cooking coal average CNF which entered into consumption was around 280 per ton. So as far as the future is concerned, the way we are looking at it is uh, the realizations have improved over Q3, uh, particularly in the month of January. And at the same time, the input prices are also going up like iron ore, cooking coal, all of them have gone up. So, but the way we are looking at cooking coal for this quarter will be flat. There may not be any reduction. At the same time, there may not be any increase uh, because we have already procured two months ahead. So more or less, we will be covering at the same rate as far as the cooking coal is concerned. Iron ore, whatever increases are there, that will get reflected. So at the same time, there will be good volumes because uh, uh, we were operating at 92% uh, 90, 92%, 92.5% capacity utilization in the last quarter. Uh, other than bush and power and steel. If we add bush and power and steel, the capacity utilization improved uh, compared to previous quarter, it was 91%. Whereas in Q4, we expect uh, we will be able to do better volumes, the better uh, uh, cost, cost structure. At the same time, there will be an improvement in the margins over Q3. Okay, all right. Let's focus on a couple of aspects then. You're sticking to your guidance, right? For FY23, no change out there, if you could tell us that, point number one. Point number two, you briefly spoke about pricing. So how much higher are prices today if you compare it with an average of the past quarter? Prices globally have gone up between $100 to $150 per ton, depending upon which region we are comparing with. If we look at, uh, as on date, the landed cost of imports uh, vis vis the domestic prices, so domestic prices are at discount to the extent of 5 to 6%. So there is an improvement, as I mentioned to you, during the month of uh, January. 3 4% increase uh, has happened. Uh, so we expect uh, uh, if this prices globally continues, uh, depending upon uh, domestic uh, demand, we will be able to increase the prices. Uh, raw material price increases are also happening. Hmm. And volumes, no change in your guidance. The second point which you asked about uh, volumes, we have given the guidance of 25 million ton total production and 24 million ton sales. I think we may have to slip, uh, split here the production and sales volumes. Out of 25 million ton, if we take out uh, uh, overseas, Ohio operations, which is 0.7 million ton guidance. And uh, the general, the, the, the monetary path, uh, we have given the guidance of 0.7, total together 1.4. Monetary spot, we have taken uh, certain maintenance uh, uh, shutdowns last uh, last uh, four or five months. That's why we are not able to achieve the guidance given for uh, JW is part uh, specialty steel products. That is monetary spot, earlier name. Ohio also, because of the conditions in the US, uh, there, there is a slippage as, as regards to volume. What about the beta patansa? You have given us the pricing, you have given us the cooking coal cost as well as I know cost. But safe to assume that. EBITDA per ton, I know you don't give us a fixed number, but EBITDA per ton will improve from what we saw in quarter three, upward trajectory? No, consolidated EBITDA, if you look at it, uh, it is uh, 8,080 rupees per ton, let's say 8,100 rupees per ton. Uh, but it also includes uh, exceptional losses towards forex gains and also the inventory losses we had to take in the last quarter. That translates to 1750 rupees, 1750 rupees. So those losses are not expected to be in the Q4. In fact, there could be effects gain because rupee gained in the in this uh, January. So actual EBITDA, without uh, considering these losses, so that is 8,050 or 1750 losses. If I add, actual EBITDA for the quarter is 9,800 rupees per ton. So that is the basis on which you have to look at the Q4. There will be additional volumes in Q4, and the export duty was taken out in the month of November. So there will be more exports in the Q4. With that, we'll be able to do more volumes. 
and there will be definitely an improvement in the overall EBITDA margins in Q4 with higher volumes. Okay, all right. The international business has been signs of a turnaround out there, particularly Europe. So that continues with its improvement, Rajatri? As we have been guiding, as far as the uh, European operations are concerned, if you have an order for rail milk, those operations will do well. So we have got an order. That's why it has done well in the last quarter and it will do well in Q4 also. Oh, that's good to hear. What about the debt number, sir? That's moved up a little bit, closer to around 70,000 crores odd. The same logic that you said. The rupee hasn't weakened further. It's pulled back a little bit. And part of the increase in the debt number was because of the weak uh, currency. So the debt number will come down from the 70,000 crores odd mark. Also give us a sense, say by the end of FY24, what can the debt number look like, keeping in mind the kind of capex you'll have in mind? No, if we look at, uh, as far as uh, this financial year is concerned, 69,500 from 57,000 crores. So there is an increase of uh, 12,500 crores. Out of that, 3,500 crores is on account of exchange rate fluctuations. Because the rupee depreciated by 7 rupees uh, in the nine months of this financial year. That translated to increase in the foreign currency debt uh, by 3,500 crores. So 69,500 minus 3,500 crores actually increase is 66,000 from 57,000. So 9,000 crores is the increase which has happened. Whereas in the current financial year, up to nine months, we have incurred a capex of 10,600 crores. Plus there is an accumulation of uh, inventory, which was 1.35 million tons as on 31st March 22, it went up over 2 million tons. So there is extra inventory, which we will be uh, clearing, clearing it in this uh, quarter. So considering the release of money from working capital, plus appreciation of rupee, which is happening in this quarter, plus cash accruals that can happen in this quarter, all three together, we'll be able to reduce our debt. Uh, be, be, uh, I mean, below 70,000 crores, definitely below 69,500. Whatever we have guided to the market about 3.75 to 1, debt to EBITDA will be much, much below that. Okay, all right. Any word on the inorganic growth, RINL or NMDC? Have you heard from the government of India with regard to divestment? You're interested, right? As and when it happens, we will continue to evaluate and participate as we have been telling. Uh, so I think NMDC, some progress we are seeing, but as far as RINL is concerned, we have not heard anything. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, sir, for joining us and giving us an update on the business. Let's slip into a quick break. On the other side of the break, we will be joined by Chandra Shekhar Ghosh, the MD and CEO of Bandhan Bank, to discuss their Q3 earnings. Later, we'll also connect with Prashant Jain, the joint MD and CEO of JSW Energy, to discuss their numbers.